Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fur and Fam Van Build series, where our goal is to give you the skills and the confidence you need to build your home on wheels. My wife Lauren and I started about eight months ago turning this Sprinter van into what you see behind me today. It's been a long road and we've learned a lot of things along the way, and we'd love to share all those with you. So if you're new to the channel, a little bit about how these episodes work. We start out with a brief description and a little bit of detail into the steps that we took to do the process that the video is about. And then we go into our time-lapse footage that we filmed while we were actually building the van. And that's where we get into the nitty gritty of what actually went down and how we did everything. So if you're wanting to get a quick overview, you're good until about probably the five to six minute mark. If you want that detailed description with step-by-step -step instructions on how we did everything that we did and some of the regrets that we had along the way as we did it, then you want to hang around until the end. So thanks for watching and let's jump into it. In today's episode, we're going to go through all the steps that we took in order to get our shiplap up on the ceiling, our fan installed, our AC installed. Real quick rundown of the components. We chose to do a Max Air uh, fan and then a Dometic Brisk 2 AC unit. And for all the shiplap, we use Nickel Gap shiplap from Home Depot. And we liked it because it was pre-primed and it was really easy to put together. Before any of our ceiling was installed, we first did all of our cabinet work and got all the walls framed up so that the shiplap butted up smoothly to the walls and the cabinets. The reason that we did this is because we didn't want to sacrifice what little bit of space we already had in the van. So you can see here in this corner that the shiplap actually butts up to this cabinet and the cabinet itself is mounted up into the ceiling. That made it a little trickier during install, but overall it made for a better use of the space and it wasn't too hard to work with. So once our cabinets were installed, we started at the back of the van and basically put up the shiplap in the center and worked our way towards the outside. And we left room for our AC unit and our fan hole opening as we did it. We used liquid nail and a 18 gauge brad nailer to assemble all of the shiplap. And when we were done nailing it all up, we used dap speckling and filled in all of the nail holes and sanded them smooth. Then we went ahead and installed the Max Air fan and the Dometic AC unit and got those finished up. So now we're going to jump into our time lapse footage here and give you a little bit more detail on how all that went together. So what I'm working on right here is actually cutting out the hole in the back framing for our backup camera wire that runs all the way to the front of the van. Just had to chisel a little bit out and make sure that the ceiling shiplap could go onto the frame and not pinch the wire essentially. The next thing that we had to do is go through the van everywhere and make sure that all of our spray foam insulation was trimmed down. So one thing that you'll find with spray foam insulation is it's almost impossible to get it to lay down to a uniform thickness. So you pretty much spray and let it build up and almost always it expands out past where you want it to. And really that, that's what you're looking for with spray foam is you want it to expand past and then cut it back smooth. I mean, you can see some areas I'm having to trim and others I'm not. So I mean obviously we're not professionals. We didn't get a perfect coat of spray foam insulation in, but I think it's good enough for our van. It definitely helps with the temperature and we would definitely do spray foam again if we were to do another van. But it does make for a really tedious task of trimming all of it away. Uh, one thing that I found is that a, uh, box, a box cut miter saw works really good. That's what I'm using here. Uh, if you have a saw with a really fine tooth pattern, that tends to work well than the more coarse tooth patterns. I tried to get a bigger, longer saw that was more of a coarse tooth saw, but it uh, it really wanted to bite too much and not really trim the foam. So this one was a much finer tooth layout and worked really well for trimming the spray foam. One of the techniques that I use is basically taking one of the pieces of shiplap and using it as a guide to kind of see where the foam was going to hit the ceiling. 
And what I did was, you could see me taking it and like kind of scrubbing it across the ceiling. Basically, it's spanning the two um, ceiling members. It's like the two lowest points in the ceiling and making sure that there's no pieces of foam that stick down between those points throughout the van. And that's kind of how I gauged where I needed to trim and where I didn't. So another annoying thing about the spray foam is you have to vacuum it like every single time you do anything to it because it gets everywhere. The little pieces, they're kind of light, so they just kind of float around. And with us having the dogs running through the van, we were really concerned that especially Summit would uh, eat her weight in spray foam. So we made sure that we vacuumed up the spray foam basically every time that we could. So in order to get the ceiling up, we had to take down our center string that we were using to know where the center of the van was. Uh, that's a little trick that we uh, learned along the way because nothing's uh, square in the van. So if you find the center of the top and then the center of the floor, you can easily make like your hallway and your cabinets and everything line up pretty well when you install them. But in order to get the ship lap up, we had to take the string down. So we just had to kind of basically eyeball where the center was. And how we did that was using the 14 inch opening for the AC in the back. So we started in the back and found the middle of that 14 inch opening and then marked the middle of one of the pieces of shiplap and kind of lined those two marks up. And that's how we got the, the perfect center piece in. And you can see this goes much faster with two people because you kind of have to hold it on the ceiling and then nail it in with a nailer. We chose to use 18 gauge brad nails to nail it into the ceiling. Uh, I think that's a pretty common way to install shiplap. Initially we were going to use um, cedar tongue and groove and that's when we were planning on staining the ceiling a certain color and then having the walls be white but we changed our mind on the design of the van and decided that we wanted the entire uh, ceiling and walls to be white because we chose to go with the black cabinets that you see and so that really made it where the cedar was going to be a little more difficult to work with we would have had to prime it and sand it a lot more and we would have still had knotty looking uh, boards on the ceiling, which is not really the look that Lauren kind of had in mind for the van once we decided to go with the black cabinets. So we actually returned like $200 worth of cedar planks, uh, tongue and groove, and bought the, the nickel gap shiplap that we ended up with. I like the tongue and groove option because it actually mechanically locks together and therefore is less likely to like fall off the ceiling later on and you have to you can use less uh, brad nails and whatnot when you put it up but that didn't really go with the the look that we were going for and another thing that i didn't really like about it is it was only eighth inch thick and some of the spans on our ceiling i think they were around uh three to four feet in some areas and that's really a, a pretty large span for eighth inch material and i was kind of worried about the ceiling sagging over time so that's really how I ended up with the nickel gap ship lap. It's 5 eighths inch thick and it was pretty pretty stout so that seemed like the the best option for us. And as far as installation goes, I mean it goes together pretty well. It's uh, you don't have to worry about actually sticking anything in between the boards because the the little tongue that's on it is perfectly spaced to make it where the gap is exactly the same size all the time without having to stick anything in it. So we're working our way down the middle of the van and using some liquid nail and brad nails to get it up there. We chose to start in the middle rather than one side because of the way that the shower sticks out in the middle and also because of the way that the cabinets don't go all the way to the edge of the van on this side that the kitchen's on. So that would have resulted in, uh, it would have been hard to start from one side and go all the way over because boards would have had to have been cut funny that you wouldn't have been able to tell which side was which uh, when you're going through. So that's why we started in the middle and that made it where we could work our way out and cut out for the cabinets in the shower as we went. And it's, it's hard to tell from this view, but our kitchen cabinets actually stick out two inches further than the cabinets over our bed. And so that's what made that side tricky as well. Uh, another thing is we're mounting all of our lights in our shiplap and we had the wire pulled through the conduit in our ceiling already and that's the white stuff that's hanging down out of the ceiling and basically 
we wanted to have our lights evenly spaced. And so we made it where they went in the middle of certain pieces of shiplap. And all we did was just took a hole saw that was the right size for the lights that we bought and just sawed through the, the middle of the board and lined them up in the van. So basically just measured as we were putting new pieces up, we would measure the distance that we wanted the light and then mark it and drill the hole. And that way, like you can see the two that are next to each other, they always match because they're measured from the same point in the van when we were going. So that was another little thing that we had to do as we were putting it up. And then one thing that we noticed, you see I got a clamp out here, and that is that clearly the van is not perfectly square. And so as we were running them, the gap was not lining up perfectly. So you, <laughs> the nickel gap ship lap turned into two nickels and three nickels and four nickels. And so we use the clamp to kind of pull everything back together and then nail it down. So now we're getting into some of the parts that we had to custom cut. And basically I would just take the tape measure and pull it and see where the, like in, for instance here, where the shower was and then mark that and then measure the distance that I needed to cut in. And then we used a table saw to make those cuts nice and straight and make the edge the way we wanted it to. And then we came in with a jigsaw and cut the, the little piece out to make the piece fall out. Um, you can see I used the clamp on that one as well. And what it was is the, the openings for the fan and the AC, they were pretty close, but they weren't perfect. And so that's what created that little, little difference that we had to pull in with the clamps on that end. And the, the way that we're working now is the easy way because you can stick the board on top of the tongue that sticks out, you can kind of see there. Uh, going the other direction, you kind of have to wedge it under and then push it up. And so that kind of got to be a little challenging when we got close to the cabinets, but we're gonna get to how we, how we figured that out and got through it here in a minute. We're still working this way. And one thing I did on the shower, you'll notice I left a lot of room there, and that is because our face frame was not finished for the shower. So in the particular piece I'm working on, I've got the little opening cut for the fan, I've got a couple lights drilled in it, and I've also got the opening for the shower cut in there. And when we get to the, the shower install video that's coming up in the next couple weeks, you'll see why I left that piece open there for the face frame to go up in between. And one thing that we ran into here is my wires, they're long enough to make it, but they were not long enough to pull through the hole and leave like I did in the other areas. I was worried that once I put the shiplap up, I wouldn't be able to get to the wiring. So in order to make sure that didn't happen, I went ahead and just wired the light as we were putting it up, which is, it was kind of annoying Lauren had to stand there and hold it and then I had to get the heat shrink and crimp it and do all that. But in the end, it really wasn't that bad. And so we got that board up, a bunch of liquid nail later. We put a lot of liquid nail around the fan openings just to make sure that that would uh, be nice and nice and snug. One of the main reasons that we were using the liquid nail is to try to avoid squeaking. So that's something like the van itself flexes and moves as you're driving down the road. And so anytime you use a mechanical fastener, it has the chance that it's going to squeak. And so if you'll notice, like in our earlier videos, almost all of our cabinets are glued together. Uh, a lot of them, we didn't even use fasteners. If, if we did, it was pocket hole screws, but with glue as well. And so that's to prevent the, the squeaking and kind of bond everything together. So that's why we, one of the main reasons why we put the liquid nail up in conjunction with the brad nails. So this is the tricky part I was talking about. We're working through here. Basically, what I found was is that you could make two of the pieces and once you did that you'd have to install the far piece like we are doing here and then put the middle piece in and you kind of have to kind of force it in there and hammer it in a little bit but it ended up lining up pretty well gave us a nice tight clean finish up against the cabinets and one thing that I didn't take into account with the cabinet design was the fact that the ceiling was going to hang over the face frame 5 8 7 inch so you can kind of tell it here, but the gap at the top between the, like the face frame opening is smaller than at the bottom. And fortunately, when we put the doors on the cabinets, uh, that didn't keep, that basically didn't mess the doors up. We were still able to mount them and they opened correctly. 
but if the ceiling had been any thicker, we probably would have run into some issues there. So if you're gonna go this route, make sure you take that into account with your face frame design. That's something that we failed to do, and luckily it didn't bite us, and we're really glad that it didn't. But if we're gonna do it again, we would make the face frames 5 eighths of an inch taller on the top than the bottom to keep a nice uniform look. Which now, I mean, when you look down the van, you don't really tell it, but it's something that I notice and it kind of bothers me, so I would definitely fix it in a future build. Then if you're doing it, definitely learn from our mistakes and don't make that one. So now, fortunately, my dad came and helped out with the installation of the fan and the AC. That's something it's definitely a two-person, maybe three-person job. It took like four of us to get the AC unit up on the roof because the thing was just so heavy uh, and it's really big and awkward. So what we're doing here is drilling the corners out for the fan. So I just took a hole saw that gave me a nice radius in the corners. And one thing I learned is that when you're hole sawing through metal above your head, you basically get a bunch of really hot metal showered on you. So that's why I went and got a long sleeve t-shirt to wear while I was doing this because I was just getting, uh, actually getting burned. <laughs> the little metal pieces were just stuck in my skin. It was uh, kind of not enjoyable. So that's one tip when you're cutting all this out. The Sawzall does the same thing too. It basically rains on you as you're cutting through the roof. Um, a lot of people actually tape this out on the roof and get up on the roof and cut it out from up there. But since we had the opening already framed out, I figured it'd probably be easier to just really use the, the opening as a guide and run the Sawzall. One thing that I should have done is had a slightly longer blade because the blade was just barely long enough so I had to be really careful when I was sawing not to uh, pull the blade through enough where it actually like hit the end of the blade into the metal and fold it over. I actually did that on one of the blades. But uh, once we got the, the hole cut out, we that's when I actually uh, stuck my head through here and I was standing on a cooler so I could get through there and actually do the, the installation. And one thing that I missed earlier in the video, it was kind of hard to see because we had the camera at a pretty terrible angle, but we actually put strips in between the ceiling and the wood framing of the fan. And that is because when I put in the framing for the ceiling I, and the actual opening for the fan, I made the opening for the fan the same level as the ceiling framing, and that left about a quarter inch to three eighths inch of a gap between the roof and the actual framing itself. And so the way that the Max Air fan mounts is there's a bunch of uh, sheet metal screws that go into the top of the van, and what I didn't want to happen was those to go through the top of the van and then into the wood framing and pull the metal down to the wood framing. This would have created a low spot in the roof and made it where water would want to pull up, and that's something you definitely don't want uh, around a big hole that you cut in the top of your van, because if water pulls up around the hole, more than likely over time, it's gonna find its way in the hole. So what I'm doing here uh, with all the clamps and the wood and everything is actually mounting the flange that the fan sits into. And that's what I was just explaining where the self or the uh, sheet metal screws kind of tap in. And what the clamps are doing up there is they're actually compressing out all of the butyl tape. So we ran two layers thick of butyl tape around the entire a uh, little mounting bracket that bolts down to the top of the van. And then that particular day, it was probably 98, maybe 100 degrees in South Carolina. It was freaking awful. So the roof of the van was probably like, I don't know, 150 degrees. So the butyl tape was really pliable and it smushed out really, really well underneath the uh, little shroud. And you can kind of see here in the picture, the clamps push the butyl tape out, and then when I ran the screws in, they push it out even more. And it actually pushed it out so much that it came into the inside of the van. And that was one way that we knew we had got a really good seal with the butyl tape. So I was really happy with that. And I actually drove the van for, I don't know, a couple weeks with only butyl tape up there. And I was really surprised. It withstood a couple of really hard rains and never leaked a drop. But 
even knowing that, I still went back uh, before we headed across the country and put uh, a bunch of 5200 around the opening just as like a, a precautionary measure to make sure that it never leaked. And if anybody ever buys this fan and wants to change that fan out for whatever reason, good luck because that thing is probably never coming off the roof. So we pulled the uh, little bit of wiring through the conduit there and started cutting out all the little strips that go in between the roof rafter and the metal of the roof itself for the AC unit. Um, and the big wire that's hanging down, that's actually the uh, wire that is the power cord for our air conditioner unit. And that's, it was kind of in the way when we were cutting it out. I really should have waited to run it until after I had cut uh, the roof out. So we did the same exact method on this side as we did for the fan. Drilled four holes with the hole saw and then came back with the sawzall to finish cutting the hole out. Uh, Went a little faster this time. Basically anything you do with practice, you get better at it, that kind of thing. And I was smart enough to leave my long sleeve shirt on so I didn't get molten metal raining down on me the whole time as I was working on it. Uh, another thing that I did is also took a little bit of white paint and kind of coated the edges of the roof that I knew were... Uh, they weren't exposed necessarily, but with the AC, I was worried a little bit that there might be some condensation on the inside of that deal. So I went ahead and painted the uh, the roof there with some white paint to kind of conceal all of the exposed bare metal edges that I had just made by cutting a big hole in the roof. So we did a very similar method with the clamps here, except this time we used them to clamp down the little extra pieces that we added. You can see those in there. Uh, in this shot here and this was because the way the AC unit mounts is there's four big bolts that go down through the opening here and basically you put two cross members across and it compresses the whole entire roof so I didn't want like just like with the fan I didn't want to create a low spot that would potentially leak later on so here we put the fan in the little bracket up on top of the van. It's a real easy deal. There's uh, four screws that hold it onto the van and you can see it installed here with all the butyl tapes uh, squeezing out around it. And basically when I added the 5200, I just cut the butyl tape around the edge and then put 5200 between the plastic and the metal. And so there's the AC unit sitting up on the roof. One thing that I would definitely do different the next time is not have the power cord come right out of the corner there because that's where one of the four uh, bolts goes to pull the unit down onto the van. Or like basically squeeze the ceiling to hold the unit onto the van. So I was kind of worried a little bit about chafing and vibration over time that the uh, the jacket on the wire might rub through and cause some issues. But we, we were able to route it away from it enough and I put a little bit of extra tape and some wire loom around it to make sure that that wasn't ever a problem in the future. But just something that I would have done differently if I had known more about how that AC unit mounted before I bought it. So here we're getting busy sanding all of the uh, spackling off the, the ceiling where we had to cover up all the nail holes. And that's one thing you walk a fine line when you're using a brad nailer because one it's fun to just pop 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 a bunch of nails in there and like oh it's on there but then you start to uh sand off all the spackling that you have to put on to fill all of those nail holes and you're like oh man i wonder if i could have got away with less nails so so that's something to definitely keep in mind as you're putting up any shiplap and you plan on painting it and covering up your nail holes because for every pull of the trigger is another nail hole that you have to fill with spackling and then sand later on. And as you can see, the sanding process is not a uh, not a short one. I eventually get tired of sanding with my hands. I got a, a great shoulder workout during this part of the van. <laughs> and uh, I'm about to go grab the power sander here in a few once I give up hand sanding. Uh, another thing that you can do too if you don't have your lights completely installed and you're trying to work at night is you can pull them out of the ceiling and shine them where you need to. And this will basically sh sh uh, cast a better light on the surface that you're working on and see surface imperfections. This is actually a trick I picked up 
from uh, one of my contractor friends who, when I was buying my house, he showed me how to find all the imperfections in drywall. And basically you just take a flashlight and shine it down a wall and the shadows that it cast will show you all of the imperfections in the drywall. So if you own a house and you want to see how good your drywall tape jobs are when they built your house, take a flashlight and shine it down it. And unless you live in a rather expensive custom built home, you're more than likely going to be amazed at the amount of imperfections you see in your drywall. So that's one thing I was doing with the lights here, just a little little trick that I picked up from there. And another thing, if you're working with this uh, DAP spackling, make sure that you wear a uh, mask. Now, all COVID jokes aside, <laughs> I wore a mask during the rest or, or during the build of this van, probably more times than not, just because of all the sanding dust and woodworking dust and everything. But this is something definitely working with this stuff. I mean, you can see in the time lapse how the dust is just falling off the ceiling, basically. So definitely don't want to be breathing that stuff in. It's definitely not good for you. Make sure you uh, keep yourself safe, wear a mask, and protect yourself from COVID at the same time. So you can see I finally broke out the power sander and using that to get the final, final bits sanded up and ready for paint. So we got the sanding done, or really the bulk of the sanding, and now what we're gonna do is fill in a couple little nail holes that we missed. I noticed them when I was sanding, so I marked them, and Lauren's coming back with the spackling and filling those in. So I have to do a little bit more sanding before we paint, but we wanted to have a nice and perfect paint job on the ceiling, and that was the, the way to get it done. So next step is to basically clean out all the joints. You can see I'm taking a putty knife and running it in between the, the shiplap and kind of making sure all the the uh, spackling is out of the joints and everything looks nice and clean. And what we're about to do is start to mask off in order to caulk all the seams where the cabinets meet the ceiling. Now, a couple things about this process. It definitely pays to tape things off because as you're working with uh, caulk, you'll realize that when you start smearing it into a corner, it builds up either on your finger or a little caulk spreading tool, whichever you prefer, really, really quickly. And then that fans out and gets really wide and then it gets all over your cabinets. So in our case, we did not want anything on our black cabinets that were already installed. We're using white caulk. So that was why we took all this time to tape everything off. And I mean, the taping, yeah, it adds a lot of time but it really does create a nice clean caulk joint. And that's something that we were, we were going for. And unfortunately, I made a rookie mistake on the first caulk job. I left the tape on until the caulk dried. And so when I pulled the tape off, it basically just ripped the caulk out with the tape or either ripped the tape out from under the caulk and left a big flap hanging there. So don't be like me. Uh, the proper way to do it is to go ahead and tape everything up and then put your caulk bead in, spread the caulk out, make it look nice and smooth like you want it to, and then pull the tape off. Don't wait for it to dry. If you pull it off when it's wet, you'll get a nice smooth caulk bead that doesn't have any flaps hanging off of it or anything stupid looking, and uh, it'll save you a lot of time later. So you can see here we're finishing up the the tape job on the ceiling. And so I think in total, we went through probably five or six rolls of this blue tape. Cause like I said, I messed up and had to recock everything once. And so that didn't really uh, help anything either, but it's definitely a, a lot of tape used in the van. Another thing is halfway through, I ended up buying a little caulk spreading tool and that thing actually made, made a big difference for me. Now Lauren, she prefers to just use her finger and, and spread everything out that way. But I found that I got a much cleaner joint if I used the little caulk spreader tool because it has a little triangle on one end that has different radiuses so you can choose the radius of your caulk bead. And to me, it, it made a nice uh, clean finish and I like to use it better. But the joints that Lauren did with her finger, they look pretty good too. So to each their own, I guess. So you can see we're going around. This is the, the time when I was using my finger <laughs> and smearing it in there. And it's actually a, a pretty long process. Uh, there was, there was a lot of joints on the van. So I ended up using probably two tubes of this caulk during the whole process. 
And that's one, because I had to do it twice, and two, because I was putting pretty liberal amounts on it as I went to make sure that I got really good coverage in between the, the joints. And one thing to make sure you use is a really, really flexible caulk. Uh, I think this was a Dynaflex caulk. It was the, the one with the best elasticity rating that I could find. And so far, uh, we've been uh, close to 5,000 miles now in the van with, uh, with all the uh, conversion mostly done. And I think maybe one of the caulk joints has split and it's not even in a really noticeable place. So once all the caulk dried, we pulled all the tape down for the second time, and then we put a nice coat of white paint on everything and got ready to install the bezel for the fan and the uh, air distribution box for the AC unit, which we're gonna jump into right now. Underneath the air distribution box, there's actually two crossbars that run uh, side to side in the van. So basically from this side to that side. And there's four bolts that come down through the roof and are connected to those crossbars. And there's a big gasket on the AC unit. And it runs the full perimeter around the AC unit. And when you tighten down the four bolts in all four corners, basically the big gasket gets compressed and it seals the AC unit to the roof. From there, we did a little bit of wiring and wired up the AC to 120 volt power. Then came time to put the air distribution box on. And you can see the little screws there and there where it's put on. And there's eight of those around each side, or each vent has two of them. They're more difficult to see in this one, but there's one in there and one over there and so forth and so on around the AC unit. Then what's left is to put the knobs on for the t on and off and the temperature control and you're good to go. The Max Air fan comes with a nice plastic bezel that hides the edge of the ceiling. And it comes really, really tall and you have to cut it down to whatever thickness that your ceiling is. Now we used a Milwaukee Sawzall and trimmed it down that way and then installed it with the four screws, one in each corner that come with the fan. And then we installed all of our lights for one final time all throughout the van. Now, we're not quite done with our ceiling. There's one area that still needs attention, and it's this seam that runs right there. And what our plan is to do is eventually we're gonna put a small piece of trim over that seam that hides it. So that pretty much does it for our shiplap, fan, and AC installation. We hope you liked the video. And if you do, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you have any comments, make sure you drop those below. Any questions, drop those below as well, and we'll definitely get back to you with an answer. And if you are ready for the next video in the series, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and check back in two weeks. Thanks for watching.